probably my favorite thing about YouTube is uh, kind of a sense of getting a behind the scenes look into people's intimate lives and not, you know, sexy stuff or anything, just the stuff they do uh, every day. It's like, uh, it's late at night, I've been having a lot of pain lately. I, uh, um, I looked at my friend, uh, Jordan, her, uh, um, Facebook page, and, uh, the last, uh, I'm getting better with it. I mean, it is what it is. You know, I see uh, the last picture that she uh, ever posted was, uh, it says, it's a shot of her, and it says, you don't own me. Don't try to change me in any way. And, uh, you know, that just tells me that I remember those days when I was those uncompromising days when I was young, you know, we're all perfect when we're, we're young, just the, you covered in the basking in the glory of, and the perfection of youth, you know, and, uh, we're all geniuses of life, um, but you don't own me, don't try to change me in any way, it just told me, uh, she, uh, there was a tremendous amount of sort of misunderstanding and, and ego and arrogance. Uh, and I'm not trying to be a dick about it, you know. There isn't everybody when they're young, but I mean, it, uh, and I'm not trying to be a dick about her particularly. I'm just saying, I'm just saying um, that uh, you don't own me. Don't try to change me in any way. I remember those days, and but you know the thing about love is if such a thing and I think it can exist and under certain conditions and but uh, the thing is is that it just told me she didn't understand that love is a compromise that statement you don't own me well in love you're kind of saying yeah you do own a part of me uh, and uh, don't try to change me in any way and in, in love and it's obvious she was a young you know 25 year old girl um you know in love you're, you're saying essentially to the other person yes you own i own a part of you you own a part of me <laughs> all that romantic stuff you know and uh don't try to change me in any way it sort of hence a person sort of assumes a certain perfection about themselves or a certain unbendingness but in love like i said the first part you don't own me well yeah you if you're in if you're trying to love somebody you've said yeah you own a part of me and the second part if you love somebody you have also said uh i will you know bend at least in certain ways to uh to to make to fit here to make it work it obviously it should fit from the start and it, but it, as time passes things change and so anyway i just caught a tremendous amount of and i had it too so i know it's true uh sort of ego and arrogance from that statement and sort of the ultimate rage at the world that stuff just didn't go exactly a hundred percent like her way because you can't that's like really that statement to me is like like wanting to uh you know have your have your cake and eat it too it uh uh and a misunderstanding about how the universe functions it's about give and take you know and this idea of love uh if you love somebody and they're wanting you to change in some way you've kind of made an agreement that you will change you know or at least consider it or see their side of it this unbending sort of thing you know going over somebody also mentioned uh about how many more pictures the kids have nowadays and uh uh 
a sort of glamorized look at life and that, you know that's another kind of issue um, I've noticed is that she had like a 2,000 pictures or more and they were all like dressed to the nines and partying and drinking and dancing and carrying on I didn't really see many ordinary everyday life pictures they were all sort of super glamorized shots you know an idealized look at life and uh, you know there I think I don't know if kids nowadays they have more tools to do this kind of stuff and um, I don't think they're any more narcissistic than any any generation has been maybe maybe that's increasing as a human animal evolves I, I couldn't I don't have enough data to say it feels like when I look at pictures of like flapper girls in the 20s all dressed to the nines and their little jitterbug dresses or whatever the dance they did 86 could do you know uh, and they only had one they just didn't have the technology but they only had one chance to take a picture it was like a you know a kind of a dress to the nines jitterbuggery kind of shot at a dance hall or something so uh, they probably would have taken thousands of pictures um, if they could have this is really a, a, a as technology marches on this you know this is really the first generation where all this stuff is sort of readily available and uh, it's uh, um, right there and I you know uh, as I looked at all those pictures I, what one of them really summed it up for me um, and that was uh, one of her friends had posted something it was a sexy shot of her uh doing just doing this being there doing something and uh it said uh that i can't remember the exact caption but the picture said die young die famous basically and uh there's uh there's a lot there, you know, die, it was like die young, die famous, and, uh, it was, uh, I think what that, this sort of obsession with, we're, we're moving into a, a, with technology and YouTube and other technologies where, it's kind of a thing where anybody could be famous almost seemingly not really but seemingly um, the odds are t like of getting famous on YouTube are about the same as being struck by lightning five times in a year you know unless you happen to capture you know an alien landing in uh, with you know or something and even then that's your 15 seconds but um die young die famous it, it, it it's kind of this live fast die young thing I mean the our, our most ancient ancestors scratched out on cave walls pictures about things they had seen and experienced and sometimes I think it's almost like writing Og was here you know the particular caveman was there but other times I think they they were saying look I was here and this is what I saw so sometimes I think the message can get confused with the person in other words I almost think sometimes I, I know that it's in our instinct as human beings to want to leave some kind of a mark here if you look at stuff like the pyramids I think sort of is the epitome of that um, it's uh, it's almost genetic where you want to leave it's 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 inherent in us to leave an instruction set of how to succeed or at least survive some for a small time at this thing called life uh, to pass knowledge and information on to uh, people who will come after us you know 
and I, I think that people almost have to have a certain sort of healthy ego, healthy narcissism, healthy arrogance to survive at all. You kind of have to think that you're special um, in some way. So I think those things can get confused a lot, though. And it's hard to know what the pharaohs of Egypt, a lot of it was about huge, tremendous power and ego. Uh, but I think there was another aspect of it where they were saying, I was here, and this is what I experienced. And I think a lot of that became about the ego side of it. I was here uh, versus, especially in the later era, versus passing on information. But, uh, you know, I... Uh, I think it gets confusing for the for everybody and the young people especially but that un, uncompromising unrelenting view of life and love you don't own me don't try to change me in any any way when you break that down the person saying I'm perfect as I am uh, and I'm not going to compromise over anything and unfortunately that's a beautiful thing but unfortunately that's just not the way the universe functions um that's not how it's it's been entropy uh from the beginning a uh, 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 gradual uh, sort of give and take you know since the big bang energy is disseminated kind of a thing and it's the, the universe wouldn't even function had had there not been a couple of uh subatomic particles that got out of balance and created there's there's sort of a beautiful symmetry to everything negative and positive but uh yeah that was uh that was interesting um they're gonna delete her facebook page i got a message which you know as i get in go through the whole thing i'm, I'm better about it now it's really really sad for me because a young person dying you know suicide and, and all of that right uh it was sad, but um, I'm getting better about it. I'm better about it, really, a lot better. But, um, you know, as I look at all her friends and everything, I found out a lot of stuff about her that, that sort of shocking details. And I think that they may be, her friend has the password to it. I, I think they may be deleting it because they're all sort of involved in drugs and maybe... Uh, um, I don't even want to go there. Some sort of like uh, trading and uh, sexy girls kind of stuff, if you know what I mean. Um, it's funny because they, they, it seems like they think they invented all this stuff. It's stuff I went through when I was a kid, you know, the in the rock and roll lifestyle. Um, I guess every all kids think that they're incredibly terminally unique, but. Uh, Anyway, the point is on that is that um, all of her friends, I see a progression of, she knew some nice people from the small town she was from, and then I see this bad girl progression and more and more sort of arrogance and ego and tattoos and the I'm so bitchin', don't change me, I'm excellent kind of thing, narcissistic ego takeover. And then all of her friends, they all kind of, same thing, you know, uh, they all want to be famous and they all start like clubbing and drinking a lot in all their pictures as the chronology goes on and then they're all dressed in lingerie and doing all these sexy shots and you know as a person who lived in Hollywood worked in the entertainment business and knows this kind of judging horse flash type behavior or as professionally really judging you know not only how a person sounds but how they look it's this at the at the cream of the crop and in, in Los Angeles everybody around the world comes to Hollywood where I live for the work in the entertainment industry for the biggest part of my life and career um, uh, as I look at you know that's how I had so many hot girlfriends because even the drippings <laughs> the stuff that's left over is uh, how can you say it a friend of mine once said uh, a uh, a, a, a British 
10 as a Los Angeles 6 <laughs> as far as women and he's right it's the same with like a Kansas City you know 10 is a, a Los Angeles you know 5 or 6 you get the finest girls and most beautiful people in the world coming there to pursue a career and, but with all her friends I see this sort of uh, progression of like sort of reveling in their youth but not quite understanding it's fleeting and they all are trying to be glamour models and all this and out of a bunch of them there's maybe one or two of them that actually have the stuff and the rest of them are just kind of like they could be saved a lot of uh, frustration and pain in life if somebody professional just said look chick and I hate to even go there with this but you're like uh you know, you're 23, 24, 21 to 25 years old, and you're already like 15 pounds, over, 10 to 15 pounds overweight with cellulite starting, and you're not that pretty. You know, every every pig looks better in lingerie, you know, but it's still a pig in lingerie. But anyway, yeah, you know, it's just one of those things where there does seem to be sort of a misunderstanding of uh, these young women especially and in the end they don't understand they're just u being used by people with money as sort of like you know trifles you know to be used up and, and uh, they think they're really cute and clever because they can uh, all doors open for them but yeah it's been weird but anyway as far as you know deleting her Facebook page um, I have a lot to say on that I'm not going to go into it but um, yeah it, it's you don't own me don't try to change me in any way and always flipping the bird and all the pictures and has boss written on her finger and I'm like dude you so don't understand how the universe functions no wonder you you uh got frustrated stuff doesn't always go your way a lot of times the way to win is to uh understand that and adjust accordingly you know the world just isn't going to function as you want it to in some unrelenting uncompromising way it's just not and uh the just the arrogance and ego of that statement alone um it says you don't understand that in order to to be involved or to be you know to have these huge epic loves <laughs> which every every person in their teens and 20s thinks all these cliches are epic events you know um but uh Oh, and they all had kids, too. But the kids were never pictured in the first couple hundred of their uh, uh, Facebook pages. Uh, it was always uh, like I I'd, I'd kind of just flipped through, you know. Because uh, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to find out what really happened to this girl. What was she involved in? What was going on? Because she was a neat girl. A lot of potential. Really smart. But... So I didn't really like obsess on it, but I flipped through a bunch of their pages and they all look the same. You know, a girl with huge expectations that isn't that hot, who has a bunch of party pictures and then later, um, way down the line, it's like a, a kid that she's had with some guy. And it's like, uh, oh, you know, I can see where your priorities are. That was one thing, you know, I have a daughter about this age is another reason it affected me a lot. And uh, I, I, I'm not in contact with her at all. I, I only knew her until she was like three. Raised her a long time, a year of that myself. Her mother was a drug addict and alcoholic. And uh, I'm completely out of control. But I, I occasionally I'll look at her, my daughter's Facebook page. I was happy to see my daughter on her Facebook page. I have a granddaughter. I'm a grandfather through her. I don't talk to my daughter at all. But on my daughter's Facebook page, she has a big picture of her daughter, my granddaughter, to start with. It's the banner, you know, it's the picture on the page. So I was glad to see her values, or at least... Um, 
she got the young girl Yaya's out of the way um, at some point, unfortunately, and totally believes in love, and she's in her first marriage and all of that. <laughs> unfortunately, that's another whole thing too. It's like so. Anyway, just just some thoughts there. But uh, I don't know. As far as this, everybody can't be famous, and I think that uh, the way our culture has, and in you know, in, I blame the damn MTV. Right? I'm not one of those people. I just think media and culture and the way the world is designed uh, is uh, sort of given all these people the idea that it's easy to be famous and and then there's another thought behind that and and that idea is that they've never really considered who should be famous who deserves who's done the work i guess that's the the thing is that and i see overwhelmingly on youtube is that there's a lot especially the younger people and i get thousands of emails and spam and transmissions between me and thousands of other users a couple hundred a day for a year now uh, it tends to be uh, the younger the people the more likely they are to disregard everything else on YouTube except what they're doing and the more likely they are to just spam you with it, no regard to anything trying to promote themselves um, and it uh, I don't think they've ever considered have I actually done any work to towards this to, to, most of them have absolutely nothing to offer is what I'm saying. They just want to be famous for fame's sake. And uh, so, but yeah, you know, hey, I, they're, as far as the people scratching on cave walls, I think some of them uh, were trying to send messages to the people who would come after them, helpful stuff. And uh, there's, there's always the jackasses that, you know, you see everywhere that just, you, you see graffiti, it's like Og was here, you know, so there's some of that, there's probably some of both of that, but uh, anyway, just, just uh, some stuff, but it's, uh, I just have to say it, it sounds horrible to say, but I just saw a lot of arrogance, ego, and narcissism on all of these young girls' pages. Uh, and uh, no considerations beyond the self and uh, just some just food for thought you know that's dangerous territory <laughs> you know uh, I saw Dr. Phil once talk about well this narcissistic generation well he talked about it in person and just the whole Dr. Phil thing biggest douchebag narcissist power mad dickhead you could ever meet I've seen Dr. Drew say that too about this narcissistic generation actually Dr. Drew was my doctor <laughs> he's a pretty cool guy and he means well but there's healthy doses of narcissism in both of those guys so that's called the cot the cot Paul and the pot calling the kettle black there uh, you know and Dr. Phil's just a useless douchebag uh, he's not even a doctor uh, as where Dr. Drew actually practices medicine. So anyway, I mean, but the, they, they both said it's about narcissism and talk about, they're just trying to, you know, there's healthy doses of that in them, but I guess what I'm saying there is uh, that that it's uh it's a new era and there are new tools and it's a fine line and I think uh, uh, you know I'm, I'm not sure if it's narcissism or ego or arrogance or what I think a lot of people just don't have the professional training that I get videos from on YouTube to understand if they even knew that they were terrible that they sucked that would be something but they don't even know that so I think it's just a lot of it's just wild dreaming um, and uh, 
no background, no reference point to, of understanding to, to get this stuff. So anyway, you know, it's been on my mind a lot and it's something I've had to deal with for years, all of these sort of young people who are have nothing to promote but are still promoting the hell out of it, you know. Maybe it's just the the dreams and innocence of youth. A lot of pain. I'm going to knock this out. People, this video is clear.